Hello everyone, it's Nathaniel here, your 3D CG guru. And today I'm going to show everyone my new plugin I have for Maya to bridge your workflows between Maya and Cascader. I'm going to do this video in a series of different steps. So first I'm going to show you how to install the plugin. Then I'm going to go through some of the potential workflows you'd want to use with that plugin. And then at the end, I'll talk about a little bit of information you might want to know regarding troubleshooting the plugin, as well as where the plugin actually exists on your hard drive. So let's get started. To begin with, go ahead and just run down to the description section of this video where you'll find a link to my GitHub project. You can go ahead and just go down to the installation section here and click on this Maya Cask installer Pi file. This will download this file to your computer. From there, you're going to want to go ahead and load up Maya. Before you do this install, I should mention that this plugin only works with Cascader 2023.2 and greater. If you have not installed that version of the app yet, please do that first because this installer is going to make some modifications to their setup files. And if you install it after the fact, the plugin won't work. You'll essentially have to reinstall. So simply drag and drop this installer into your viewport. Click on that install button. You're going to see a series of different little command prompt windows up here, go ahead and just ignore those. In about 20 seconds or so, you should now have Maya successfully installed on your machine. If you see something that says you actually have an error message, please jump to the end of this video where I talk about what you should do if the installer doesn't actually work for you. Once that install is complete, you can verify that the installation was a success because you'll notice a Cascader menu right at the top of your viewport. If you load Cascader at this point, you should also see Inside of the commands menu, a sub menu called Maya, where we have the option to send animation data to Maya. I have a simple sample scene here that I'm gonna to use to get everyone started. So the fastest way to get your information over from Maya to Cascader is to simply just go to the Cascader menu and say quick export. This will write out an FBX file and then tell Cascader to go ahead and load that file. And there we go, our scene is imported. You'll notice with the quick export, all of the data came across as baked animation information. So if you don't actually have animation data, you can go ahead and nuke those keys. I'm gonna go ahead and close this scene. We'll start fresh again. The plugin by default, when you do a quick export and you don't have anything selected, will just bring everything it finds over to Cascader. If you have something selected at the time, maybe you just wanna bring over some reference models, go ahead and select those objects and do the quick export. In that particular case, just the selected objects will come over to Cascader for you to start working with. Once you've sent something over to Cascader for the first time, you'll notice to the left, you now have a new object set in the outliner. This is how I send data back and forth between Cascader and Maya. So rather than sending an entire scene every time, you may have a complex scene and you'll only wanna send a subset of that information over to Cascader. So we do that through these object sets. Now, while the quick export option is just a convenient way to get our data over to Cascader, we have a more robust method of sending data over to Cascader via the editor. So if I go ahead and open my editor up, you'll see that it will list any export sets that it finds in the list. I can go ahead and create new sets if I want. I can delete my existing sets. The deleting and creating of data really is the same as just selecting the object here and hitting delete. And I also have add selected, remove selected from here, just as a convenience instead of going in and adding and removing stuff from the selection set here. Now the sets themselves do actually have some embedded data tacked onto them. You'll see here, I have this ID information that I create with each export set. And we have a dynamic set option here, which I'll talk about towards the end of the video. Inside of Cascader, you'll see here, we have the same export set. And if we look here, we have a section here called Maya Roots, which lists everything that was brought over at the root level of the hierarchies, and then also the actual data of the ID here. The most important thing we're probably gonna to wanna to bring over to Cascader from Maya is going to be characters. And I use the HIK system to translate our characters from Maya's HIK system to Cascader's quick rig tool. I wanna to go ahead and bring this tank character over here. So I'm gonna hit add HIK, and this interface will list any character that I don't already have a export set set up for. So I'm gonna select my tank here and say, okay. When I do this, you'll notice that I now have a new tab here called rig settings. The one thing you have to define is the actual spine bone itself so that Cascader knows what the top of the spine is. So select your chest joint. We have options here for any weapon bones that your character may have. I don't have one with this particular character, 
But if you have a joint in your scene, you can simply find that joint and just middle click and drag it over to this spot and then hit X if you need to clear. So these options here really align with what we see when we're in Cascader using the quick rig tool. New rigs can only be sent to Cascader through this interface. If your HIK character currently has animation data on it, it'll actually switch over to the stance pose for you automatically before exporting the data so that your stance pose is correct inside of Cascader. When I have my character, I have two choices of how I want to send that data over. I can just send it to the current scene or I can send it to a new scene. So I'll go ahead and just hit current scene. It'll take a few moments for everything to process on Cascader's side. Cascader should eventually pop up. And here we have the option to either immediately generate our rig or continue editing. So you might want to go in here and make some refinements as far as like maybe where are the back contact points for your feet, or maybe you want to refine some of the uh, rigid bodies that we have here. Whatever you need to do, you can go ahead and validate that information here and then just hit generate. Once that's done, now we can just start animating. You'll notice the textures automatically come over as well. And that's a nice little feature. If you wind up being in a situation where the textures are not able to be found in Cascader due to an absolute path changing or you've changed your textures, you can simply go into the Cascader update and say update textures. It'll send all that information over to Cascader and refresh your textures for you. Let's go ahead and just create a quick animation for my character here. I'm going to right click and actually disable textures in this case, just so it's a little bit easier to see my uh, auto posing rig here. So we'll just make something really fast. All right, now I can send this information back. When I do that, I have a couple different choices here. I can send just one of these blocks of data over if I select just that particular export set, or if nothing is selected at the time, everything will be sent back to Maya. So I'll go to Commands, Maya, and just say Export Animation. And here in Maya, our animation data is back and working again. A few other things to note about the editor itself. If your character has twist bones or roll bones, you will notice you get a series of additional options here inside of the rig settings. So we can quickly set the axis that the roll occurs on for all joints if we use the global twist axis option here, or if you have different axes for the different sections of your body, uh, you can do those at an individual limb segment level at this location. When you have some roll bones on some limb segments, but not others, those that are invalid will be grayed out. So you can't change that. And then also, if you want to set your actual twist percents, you can hit the strength percent button and it'll go ahead and just bring up the HIK properties for you. So you can quickly choose those roll values or strength values for the twist bones over inside a cascader. Going back to the selection set, the dynamic set by default will kind of look at what content you added to the set and try to make sure it includes anything beyond what you may have included. So if you include something like a joint and that joint is part of a skinned mesh, it'll bring the skinned mesh along. It'll also bring along any joints that are attached to that skin mesh. So it tries to dynamically add to the set based of the context of what you add to that set. Some advanced users may not want that feature. Maybe they want to choose very specific content and exclude other things that have dependencies. Really, it just looks for skinned meshes and the skin clusters and joints and make sure all of that is included. But if you're in a weird particular case, you can turn the dynamic set off and then it will only export what you've added specifically to the set. So you're going to be responsible then for making sure all the skin meshes are inside of your set there. Beyond our editor here, we also have some additional menu choices here. So if you have content inside of Maya that's already in an existing scene and you want to update that information in Cascader, you can simply go to Update, Update Animations. If it finds that content exists in the other scene, it will update the animation data. If the quick export sets do not exist in that scene, it will not send anything over to Cascader. Same thing here with the update. Update models will only send new models over to your scene if the model already exists inside of Cascader. For now, it won't do anything different. We've already talked about the update textures. If you want to just send everything over to Cascader, essentially models and animation data, and you want to send it over to a new scene, I would do that through the send to and just say new scene here, and it'll send that information over. Now again, when it sends this information over, this is not going to do anything in relation to the actual quick rig tool for my character here. Before I wrap this video up, I want to go ahead and just show an example of sending this data back from Cascader to Maya. In Maya, I have essentially a rifle character and I have the actual main character. 
And then I created two different export sets and sent that information over to Cascader. In Cascader, I went ahead and animated this um, unequip animation. And I'm using Cascader's new constraint system to do this. And wow, I have to say, it is awesome if you have not used it yet. It's everything you wish constraints would be inside of other 3D applications. Now I want to send that information over. If I go up here and I select just the export set for my rifle, I go to export animation. You'll see here in my, I have just the animation of that rifle. And again, if I have nothing selected at the time and I say export animation, it'll send over all the animation data for you. Since this character is in the HIK system, it will automatically switch the source back to none since the animation data is on the source bones of this character. And if you want to see how I created this animation and use the constraints inside of Cascader, make sure you subscribe because that video will be coming out soon. If you're curious where this plugin was actually installed on your machine, just so everyone's aware, I only have a Windows machine in my house, so I'm only testing on Windows, though in theory the plugin should work for Mac as well. And I installed this under the Documents Maya Modules area. If we go in there, you should see a Cascader folder and a Cascader.mod file. If you want to uninstall the Cascader module for Maya, just simply go in here and hit delete. If you want to temporarily disable it, you can actually open this text file and just change this plus symbol over to a minus symbol. Other than that, I think the main takeaways for this plugin have been demonstrated. I would love to hear what people think about it. Please give it a try. If you have any issues, I am hanging out on the official Cascader Discord forum. You can find me there. My name is Nathaniel JLA. Additionally, I've included a link in the description of this video to my Patreon account. The Patreon account has been set up purely as a way to give support for people using this tool a higher priority than what they have from the Discord server. Patrons actually get access to a private Discord server where you can send me messages, files, and I can more easily track any type of support you or your studio may need. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and good luck animating.